So let's get started. Uh, for those of you that don't know me or have forgotten my name, I'm David. I'm with Red Hat. I do memory management stuff and uh, yeah, usually also fairly close virtual, virtual machine related memory management stuff. Uh, today I want to talk about something that's not really directly related to virtual machines, but still important, and it has the metrical name of Gup and Cal, uh, get user pages paired with copy and write, um, but specific to anonymous memory only. I, I have a lot of stuff to cover. Um, I'm not going to most probably talk about everything. Uh, I'm going to talk about the most important stuff, and if we have more time, we can actually dive into the details. But um, we're going to focus on some background history and then the approach that is currently being upstream. So let's back, uh, talk about some background and history. So um, whenever we talk about copy and write with uh, anonymous memory, uh, we actually want to share anonymous memory uh, between processes uh, during fork, for example. Um, another example would be KSM. And uh, what we do is when we share an anonymous page uh, between two processes is that we have to map them read only into both processes. And uh, as soon as one of the processes tries to write to that you now read-only map page, we have to decide what to do. Um, for example, we have to copy the page, or we might be able to decide, oh yeah, like there's no need to copy, I can just reuse this page because like there's nobody else sharing this page anymore with me. And th the simplest condition you can think about, like whether you have to copy or whether you can reuse is to take a look at the map count. So if the map count is bigger than one, that means that there is definitely somebody else uh, sharing the page, so you have to copy and you cannot reuse. Um, an example below, um, you have this example, two page tables map the same uh, anonymous page, and as soon as somebody writes to it, it get actually gets copied. And uh, can then, of course, the copy can then be used uh, read-writable. This all sounds like fairly easy, I would say, uh, unless we wouldn't have get user pages. So get user pages, I assume most of you are familiar with that. It's a mechanism to get a reference on a page and usually we want to then use that reference to access the data stored in the page either directly or uh, eventually later. And it comes in multiple flavors. Some of the flavors are, for example, a forget which means actually like we only want to access the struct page and not the page contents, which isn't true. It's documented that way in the kernel, but it's not true because for example, odirect uses forget excessively. Then we have for pin, which uh, essentially means I, I want to take a reference on the page and I want to really access page content. Uh, and usually we use that only in context of user User references, for example, when we have to deal with VFIO, RDMA, IO Uring 6 buses and something like that. We can have read-write references, read-only references, and uh, in general, when we talk about get user page references, they are counted via the page count and not via the map, map code, obviously, because the map count only tells us like how many processes are actually mapping this page. So in general, uh, when we only take a look at the map count, and the page count, um, we don't know too much about get user page references. So for example, map count and one, but the reference count bigger than one. Like, like what is that other reference? Where is it from? Is it a read write reference, read only reference? Is it a group reference? Is it just like some other reference from the uh, operating system? Uh, we don't really know that. So um, in general, the question is, can both things paired um, be problematic? and I wouldn't be here uh, if it wouldn't be problematic, so it is. And um, the, uh, the, the original thing that kicked it all off was the copy and write security issue. Um, I, I'm gonna walk you through that briefly. So um, there is something called VM Splice, which allows you to take a read-only reference on a page and map it into a pipe. And later on, when somebody actually reads from that pipe, it will read from the actual page, so there will not be any copying of data involved. Uh, but this actually allows you to do something very nasty. So um, you have some anonymous page in the parent, you store some boring data in it, and then you call fork. And a child, what it can actually do is it can take such a read-only reference on that page and then simply unmap the memory. So what we're left with is a page that's only mapped once, but there are additional references from another process. And as soon as our parent now stores some secret data into that area, 
a child can actually observe that by just reading out of that pipe. And uh, th that's not good <laughs> because our uh, child process might have less privileges than our parent process. So you could like read secret data from your child in your parent process. If we take a look at the history of the whole thing, um, it was reported in May 2020, resulted in a CVE. Uh, it was fixed by some commit that fixed broke a lot of other stuff. We later reverted it. Um, then there was another fix essentially that was called copyright simplifications um, that, that fixed the security issue for ordinary anonymous memory, but it didn't consider, for example, to swap page, transparent huge pages and huge TLB. So um, on the one hand, after reverting that like problematic commit before that, we actually um, had something that was semi-broken and semi-secure. So um, the interesting thing is that the copy and write simplification resulted in some very subtle uh, undesired side effects and we're gonna talk about them. Long story short, um, two swap page and transparent huge pages are nowadays fixed upstream. Um, they're just like in, in the upcoming kernel release, they're gonna be fixed, such that there will not be a security issue. However, um, I, I call it like, now, now most of the stuff is consistently broken. <laughs> it's not like that one thing is differently broken, everything is consistently broken, because like we have these undesired side effects across uh, all, almost all anonymous memory. Uh, huge TLB is still affected upstream by the security issue and it's not that easy to fix with the current approach, but we in general don't care too much about Huge TLB, I would say, because like the usage of huge TLB for sharing memory between a privileged child uh, parent process and unprivileged parent privileged privileged parent process and unprivileged child process are rather rare. So that's certainly something uh, to take a look at it in the future. But it's not like a, an Im immediate issue, I would say. So let's take a look what the uh, upstream fix does to copy and write simplification. Essentially we say, oh yeah, like if the page count is not one, we're not gonna reuse the page. That means like we're no longer gonna take a look at the map count, how often is this page map, but we say, oh yeah, if, if there are any references that we don't expect, which is uh, like more than one, we're not gonna reuse the page. So in general, all we care about is the reference count now to make a decision. Uh, I think this has a nice property because it means that we cannot have a security issue anymore because like there can only be one reference that's from the page table we're looking at right now. There cannot be any other references. But obviously um, that also means that whenever we run into this code and we detect a page count that is bigger than one that we have to copy and that's then the real issue because we might actually copy too often. Here's the example of the security flaw and how it's fixed. Uh, if we just take a look at a ref count, it actually means that at the point in time where our parent would want to store the secret data into uh, that, that shared page, so to say, that has been unmapped in the child, we would now have a reference count of two. Copy and write handler says, yeah, there is like an additional reference, I'm not gonna reuse that page. So uh, we're gonna copy and write and our child will not be able to observe the memory modifications on the parent. That is the nice part. Let's talk about the undesired side effects. So th this is a, a let, let's call it a, not an artificial example, um, but it's hard to come up, for example, with a pin user page user that you can just like write in a C program. So um, meaning, for example, if you take a read-only reference in the parent, for example, we, via RDMA, VFIO, VDPA, and something else, um, what can happen is that if you take a read-only reference on a page that's currently marked as shared or possibly shared um, because it's mapped read-only, you suddenly have like a page that's mapped read-only into your page table. Uh, after our pin user pages, the reference count is actually bigger than one. So whenever we now simply write to our memory, the copy and write handler says, oh yeah, well, this page is mapped read-only, it has a reference count that's bigger than one, so I'm gonna copy. So what happened here now is that whatever we write into our uh, 
page from our process will not be observable by our uh, pin user page user, which means that we have a disconnect between our, for example, secondary MMU and our primary MMU. Uh, because in this scenario, we copied, although we shouldn't have copied. So in general, when we take a look at that approach, that means that we, we have two issues. On the one hand, um, we might copy, although there is no need to copy, uh, and it's un simply unnecessary, so it doesn't do any harm, but uh, it might result in some performance degradation. On the other hand, um, what we saw just now is that we copy, although we really shouldn't copy, because it results in an inconsistency. And uh, that's then something that I refer to as a wrong copy and write. And uh, yeah, well, the issue is here that GUP and the memory management code lose synchronicity. And for example, in the, uh, this, what we saw just in the previous example, um, the GUP user will lose, for example, that write access from the parent process. Um, the, the nasty thing is that this happens essentially whenever our page gets mapped read only into the page table. And unfortunately, there are various ways to get a page map read only into the page table. One example is if you swap out a page or you unmap the page and you do a read access, then it gets refaulted from the swap cache read only and you run into that exact, uh, exact issue. Uh, but we also learned that, for example, NUMA hinting code can, for whatever reason, uh, lose the uh, write protection on a uh, map page. So suddenly, in your NUMA hinting code, you would lose write protection of the PDE, the page would be read-only, and as soon as somebody writes to the page, you would actually create a disconnect between GUP and uh, yeah, the pages that are mapped into the page table. So the approach that I'm upstreaming right now when I want to raise awareness, because maybe we can have more people review that code, which would be uh, pretty good, is something called uh, page unknown exclusive, um, paired with something called unsharing and paired with the ref count logic. So our copy and write handler will still rely on the ref count, but we tweak it in a way that it doesn't end up in these um, wrong house, so to say, so where we really shouldn't copy and write. And at the same time, we try to mitigate a little the performance issues that we've been seeing. So in general, uh, page and an exclusive, it's a page flag. And what it expresses is, is, uh, is this anonymous page that I'm looking at is it exclusive to a single process or might it be shared? So if it might be shared, it means like it could be exclusive, it could not be exclusive, we don't know. But uh, once we see that flag set, it means like this is really an exclusive page. Then we have a set of rules of uh, how to actually apply this whole thing. So for example, uh, whenever we map a page writable into a page table, it means because it's writable, it cannot be shared as per definition, so it has to be exclusive. What we're not gonna allow is in our copy and write handler, for example, to replace a page that's exclusive. So if our copy and write handler stumbles over a page that's exclusive, we're simply gonna reuse it. We're not gonna do any kind of checks on the ref count because we know this page is exclusive and hasn't been shared with anybody else. The other hand, in our get user page code, when we pin a page that's anonymous, we're only gonna allow to pin it if it's exclusive. If it's not exclusive, um, we most probably have to trigger unsharing, and I'm gonna talk about it next. And uh, the last rule, so to say, is that uh, whenever we have a page that's anonymous and exclusive, and we might want to share it, for example, because we fork, or there's case M coming around, we disallow that uh, if the page may be pinned. So that it means as soon as the page may be pinned, we're by no means gonna uh, share it with anybody. And on the other way around, like we're only gonna allow to pin a page if it's exclusive and that actually gives us some, quite some nice um, consistency guarantees between, on the one hand, uh, uh, what does a pin on an anonymous page mean? For example, that it cannot be shared. And on the other hand, that uh, we, uh, when we take a look at an ordinary process that doesn't fork, all pages are exclusive, or page fault handler or a copy and write handler will be extremely fast because, for example, we don't have to take a look at, uh, take to, have to take the page log, anything like that. We just thought, oh yeah, this page is exclusive, I'm gonna reuse it, I'm done. 
So um, what happens if we want to pin an anonymous page read writable? So we want to take a write reference. Uh, it's fairly easy. So if the page is already mapped writable in our page table, we can just go ahead and pin it because like, if it's writable, that implies that it has to be exclusive. If uh, the page is mapped readable, it's the same thing as we used to do always, like taking a write pin on a readable, readable map page uh, means that we have to trigger a write fault. So we're gonna head into the write fault, write fault handler will trigger eventually a copy and write and we'll be left with a page that's map writable and we can just pin it. Now the interesting thing is when we want to take a read only pin on a page. Um, if it's mapped writable, again, that's not an issue. We know if it's writable, it's exclusive, we can just pin it. Um, if it's mapped readable and it's exclusive, it's also not an issue because our rule says like we only pin exclusive pages so we can go ahead. But in the special case that our page is mapped readable and it's not exclusive, we have to trigger something that's called unsharing. And uh, unsharing is essentially um, a copy and write but without mapping the page writable. So it, it looks like a copy and read so uh, essentially we want to make sure that whatever shared page was mapped there afterwards, we have an exclusive page. And it's very simple to our write fault handling. So um, for example, we, we might detect, oh yeah, this page has a single reference, so we can just reuse it. So we are gonna set the page as exclusive and we're done. Uh, but of course, if there are more references, we don't know if the page is, uh, is uh, eventually has some other references on it that we're not able to deal with, so we'll have to copy. And when we copy, we're gonna map that page read only into the page table because it's unsharing and it's not a write fault. So it's essentially a read fault that triggers unsharing. You can see in the example below, uh, we have this scenario again that we have like two pages mapped read only, but this time we have a, a read access on one of the pages triggered by uh, get user pages. What we're gonna do is essentially the same thing as we had in the copy and write example, but here we're gonna leave the page mapped read only and not read writable. So um, if, if you take a look at some simple examples, th this is the example that we had before uh, where essentially the current upstream logic was messing up and was creating this um, disconnect. Uh, did you want to say something? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, just could you go back one? Sure. Oh yeah, so when we talked about this earlier, um, I strongly suggested not saying copy on read, uh, and I still do, because it, that's not what it is. It's a, it's a cute name that is completely wrong, and so w we should say something else. Um, it, I, your it, original it, description that doesn't include those words is perfect. Uh, so, so the code doesn't include that. I, I'm gonna state that I, I found some other operating systems that use the word copy and read for something similar. But yeah, it's, it's more like, the interesting thing is like we talk about copy and write, copy and read, but actually it's not like a copy and read, it's copy on scoop triggered unsharing, so it's unsharing, that's the official word. Yeah. Is called copy on access or? Not really access because it's not like that the CPU is accessing it and triggering it, it's really only from like get user pages code that wants to pin a page and that's why we refer to it as unsharing, just as generic. For example, we might have other uses of unsharing in the future, eventually, for example, KSM code might want to trigger that in some scenarios. Um, so um, good, get user pages is like the most prominent example. But the big difference here is, and I agree that copy and read is a bad name for it, it somehow makes you assume that this is something that could also be triggered by the CPU on read access, but that's not, that's not what happens. It only happens when like Coop wants to take a read only reference. So if we take a look at our example, um, it's essentially um, when we took the pin user page example previously and then the men set operation, the men set operation would have triggered a copy and write because the page was shared um, and we would have messed up. In this example, as soon as we do the pin user pages uh, read only pin essentially, we trigger unsharing and uh, at the point in time where we trigger unsharing, we can then actually write to the page without any issues and we're done. And unsharing here in this example simply means because there are no other references uh, because our child quit, means that we simply set the page as exclusive. Uh, group code can go ahead and pin that exclusive page and we're done. If, if we change that example a little, so you can see like the child quit goes to child doesn't quit, 
we actually still have a page uh, that has more, more references than expected. As soon as we trigger unsharing, we now have to copy the page and our parent process will then work on the copy and we also don't have any inconsistency. And last but not least, um, this is uh, an example where we take a read-only pin before fork. And it also works as exa uh, expected because um, when we start at the very top, we have a page that has a, refer cons a reference count of one, it's exclusive. Um, we write to it, that's not gonna change anything. Uh, we take a read-only pin in that example. Uh, the page is exclusive, we can just go ahead and pin it read-only. So the reference count will change. Uh, the, the interesting thing now is during fork, during fork we'll detect, oh yeah, this page may be pinned. And because the page may be pinned, we're not gonna share it. So we're not gonna turn the exclusive page into a shared page. So um, we're not gonna share it with our child. Our child will immediately receive a copy and our parent can just continue to work on that and everybody's happy. Any questions regarding that? Perfect. So um, of course it, it would be easy. Um, I'm just gonna mention some tricky bits. So um, transparent huge pages are nasty. <laughs> the issue with transparent huge pages is that like uh, when, as soon as you PDE map a transparent huge page, you actually need that exclusive information per subpage because our process or a could do some nasty things. It could remap parts of a transparent huge page to a different page table. It could set, uh, how is it called? Um, map, map no fork or no copy, I, I don't recall how it's called, but that you actually don't want to include a certain part of your, your VMA uh, in, in a, a fork event. So you can come up with quite some nasty conditions where only parts of a transparent huge page are mapped to the one process, the other in another, another process. As soon as you compare that with pinning, then stuff gets a little bit nasty. So um, we need that information per subpage. And we only need it per subpage as soon as we um, don't natively map a transparent huge page as a huge page, but as soon as we map it as a PDE map transparent huge page. Another thing that is a little bit subtle is, for example, uh, when we do some kind of temporary unmap. So temporary unmap is, for example, when we want to swap out a page, we're gonna insert into our page table a uh, uh, swap PD. Uh, and the same goes for migration. As if we want to migrate, we're gonna unmap the page and insert a migration entry. But what happens if we're in that condition and we call fork? Well, if we're in that condition and we call fork, our fork call will simply duplicate the swap entries or duplicate the migration entries. And if we had like a, a, a pin on these pages before, uh, we replace them by migration or by swap entry, fork would, would simply copy them. So we would be in a scenario where we would have a pin on a page that's no longer exclusive, but it has been shared. So we have to take care of that. And essentially it is, we only gonna unmap something from the page table. If we can clear the exclusive bit, we can only clear the exclusive bit if there are no pins on the page, which means like if we succeed in, in, in the clearing operation, we cannot have any pins on that. Fork code can go ahead and share the page, we'll be fine. Something uh, else that is really nasty that I learned is uh, if we have uh, get user pages fast, which basically takes no locks, it just locks the page table and pins the page without staring at uh, yeah, page locks or uh, anything else. Uh, and the page, uh, page, um, page lock or page table lock, so this should actually be, doesn't take the page table lock. So, um, the thing is, um, the page table log is our primary mechanism to synchronize against um, clearing and testing the exclusive bit. But good code doesn't care, it doesn't take the page table log, so how could we possibly be able to synchronize with that? Because it could be we're just about to share the page doing fork, but some concurrent code takes a reference on the code, and we could again end up in a scenario where we have a pin on a page that's no longer exclusive. So we have to do some tricks, uh, for example, we, um, have to make sure whenever we temporarily unmap a page that we invalidate and clear and do a TLB flush because the TLB flush will then actually synchronize against good fast code and we can be sure uh, or can make sure that um, this scenario that I described cannot happen. And the other thing is that during fork we, uh, we rely on a special um, sequence counter that also tells good fast code like, um, well, it's nice that you took a reference on that page, a pin on that page but there was concurrent fork activity, so please drop that reference and try again. 
system. Also, by that mechanism, we can make sure that we cannot end up with a page that's pinned and shared because that, again, would be a security issue, of course. Um, the other thing is, um, of course, when we um, do a temporary unmap, like for migration, and we en insert a migration entry, uh, we were, were required to clear the page on an exclusive bit um, to make it work. But of course, uh, we might want to preserve that information that the page was exclusive. And uh, we're gonna do that via the, um, the swap PD, uh, non swap PDE. So we have special migration entries that we enter into the page table. Um, for writable migration entries, it's fairly simple because uh, writable on an anonymous page implies exclusive, so we already have that information. But when we have a read-only map page, um, and that read-only map page was exclusive, we have to remember that information in the migration entry. What I came up with is simply have yet another migration entry. It's called readable exclusive, uh, not, not the best name, uh, not my best work, but it gets the job done. So essentially you have uh, writable migration entries, you have readable migration entries, and you have readable exclusion, exclusive migration entries, and that allows you to to uh, handle migration accordingly and to preserve that exclusivity information even when you migrate a page. Uh, the other thing is, uh, how, how can we make sure that we, when we swap out something that we don't lose that information? Um, which is actually only required to get um, not full pin correct, but to get full get correct. And um, bad news is that we need an architecture specific swap PTE flag for that, so we have to remember, just like for example for use of uh, soft dirty tracking, uh, we have to remember that the swap entry has certain attributes, and that in that sense it would mean that swap PTE is exclusive, which is an attribute. Um, but I only so far converted uh, the most prominent 64-bit architectures to it, like for example ARM64, uh, S390X, PowerPC, and of course uh, our beloved x86-64. Um, the other ones, I mean, it's, it, it, it can be done, but um, yeah, let's get it upstream first and then we can, we can think about the others and especially like uh, about which 32-bit architectures we actually care in that sense. Any, uh, any questions regarding that, these details? Yeah? I, I, I do, but we're right at the top of the hour, so we have to drag over. Right, so... Um, what I'm gonna mention here, and this is gonna be the last slide, is um, it's not optimal. And that might or might not be an issue. Um, the thing is, uh, as long as our process doesn't call fork, all pages are, un all anonymous pages are exclusive and we live a happy life. Because like we're gonna reuse an exclusive page in the copy and write handler immediately. But as soon as we fork, we're no longer optimal because um, we again fall back on the check, like uh, is the page count equal to one, is it not one? And we, we can end up in scenarios where the page count isn't one uh, quite easily, for example, with uh, speculative references, things like that. But most prominently, when we have a PT map THP, that's always gonna have a page count that's bigger than one. So uh, we're always gonna have to copy instead of reuse, and that's not optimal. Question here is, do we care? <laughs> Like, is there a workload that will care that we do unnecessary copies or not? And um, w with the work that I presented, essentially everything that uses full pin, so that you use a proper pin on a page is completely fine. Uh, what's not completely fine yet, and this is not something that was broken uh, in between, it never worked reliably, is that when you take a full get, uh, full write on a page, so you t take a writable reference that is, uh, that, uh, is not a pin, um, it will only work reliably as long as you don't fork and as long as your architecture supports a special uh, swap PTE flag to preserve the exclusive uh, information. So um, the motivation here is, uh, oh well then we have to convert our direct to full pin and everybody will be happy and we can remove from, eventually from our man page of, uh, of open that our direct should never be used in combination with fork because it's evil. Because once we fix that, it actually should work as as reliably as we can. Uh, I leave you guys with that. Um, we, we can talk in the hallway if there are any questions. Um, thanks a lot.